Hello, welcome to my video. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to search data set from the Earth Engine data catalog and how you can import the data to Jupyter Notebook so that you don't have to go to the Earth Engine data website every time they, when you need some data. Okay, let's get started. In order to follow this tutorial, you need to install the GEMAP Python package. If you have not done this before, you can follow my other tutorials on how to install the package. And after that, you can uh, git clone the repository or you can download the, the repository as a zip file and then unzip on your computer. So um, we are going to use the examples under the uh, notebooks folder number 19. So I'm going to update here. So you should look for number 19. Um, so after you get that one onto a computer, then you can start Jupyter Notebook. So I'm just going to hit enter Jupyter Notebook. Let me maximize the window and go to examples, notebooks. So number 19. And uh, before I get into that, I want to show you how you can find data on the Google's Engine website. So if you go to the Google's Engine, then you uh, the first tab here, data set. So this is where you can look for all kinds of a public data set available on um, the Earth Engine data catalog. So there are a lot of data available in here. And um, you can just do a simple uh, search, then you should be able to find the data. So for example, uh, land cover. So if you click the land cover, and once you get in, you see all the information. In here, the very important thing that you need to know is to get the ID. So if you once you get into any data set, then you click the link. So this is the most important one that you need to get. Um, it's the unique ID, how you can get the data and uh, use that for analysis. So you need to get the a unique ID and whether it's an imagery or uh, image or image collection. Most of the time you won't be able to remember the unique ID. So um, you need to come, keep coming back to the website to do the Google search and to find the data set. It's not very convenient. So that's why I implemented this function so that you can easily import the data without having to visit this website. So let's get started. First of all, once you open the, the notebook, you need to import the package. So you will need both the Earth Engine and also the GE map. And make sure you update to the latest one. Um, if you um, install this package before, you need to uncommon this line. So control slash on your keyboard and then execute this one, then restart the kernel, okay? Because I already installed, so I don't need to do this step. Then all we need to do is to create an interactive map using these two lines call. So this execute. And now you have the map. So this is the new one that I just added. So in here, you can just click this button uh, to source data, so, uh, places, but or locations, long as you uh, let it you, and data. So we are going to focus on this one today. Uh, in this video is how to source data set. And uh, it's very e easy. So all you need to do is to type a keyword in here and then just hit enter. So for example, if you are interested in doing um, some terrain analysis, you you are interested in finding elevation. So for example, you just type elevation and then hit enter. And just within a few seconds, then you will automatically populate um, the list. So if you see from here, this is the first one, right? So this is the um, DM. And you can click the drop down list. So from here, you will see a bunch of those, everything that um, uh, has a DEM tag. It's the same as you can find from here. So if we go back to the Earth Engine um, data set in here, there's one called terrain. So most of the terrain data set actually is elevation. So if you click this one, and this is all the one that right now you can directly access within here. So for example, if you Go click this one and let's see which one do we like. How about um, SRTM, okay? Well, uh, very common one used for global elevation. So you get um, the, the title for this data set 
and the data set availability. Okay, this was uh, in acquired in 2000. And this is the Earth Engine snippet, basically what you need uh, to use in the Jupyter Notebook in order to reference this data set. And also the hyperlink. So if you click the link, it should take you to the website. So this is the same thing that um, you use to search within the data catalog. Okay, so similarly data set and then the snippet and also the, the thumbnail, if you come back to here. So also have the thumbnail in here for you. You can, you can select any data set you like. Um, it will automatically retrieve the thumbnail. And next, the most uh, important one here is how to actually do, I have something in here, let me delete this first. So you don't interfere. Okay, so once you find the data set you like, all you need to do is just hit import. Okay, so pay attention to this one below in here. For now, there's nothing in here, okay? So if I hit import, it will automatically create a new code uh, cell in here and edit two lines of code. So this is essentially this uh, ID from here. And also define a variable. So it's called data set. And then also underscore um, these three uh, random characters. Uh, it will be random. So every time you're going to get different if you get uh, another data set. And then uh, you will also add a line to add this data set into the map. Okay, so this is where you're going to show up on the layer control. Right now, this is not here yet, but you can just execute. Okay, so now you have the data set um, added to the map. Of course, you can customize the symbology. You can change the symbology um, if you want. But now if you see from here, right, we have this data there added to the map already. Okay, so you can search any data set you like. For example, now maybe I'm interested in lane cover. Okay, so if you type lane cover and then now you have the, the list for all the lane cover data set available. And so let's try, for example, this one, USGS gap um, 2011. Okay, so it should take just a few seconds Okay, now we have the data. So this one was 2011, and this is the ID. Again, you can click the link if you want to go to see more information about the data set. But you can see the thumbnail in here. Again, we can hit just import. Now you see it added another code block in here. So this one is a new name. Um, okay, so on, again, another three random characters so that it can be uniquely identified. And then all you need to do is hit one. And because this one is US only, so you need to zoom in to the US uh, region. Now we have this data set into the map. Okay, so these are two raster data set. You might also be interested in finding some vector data set. So for example, in the US, we have the so-called census data. So all you need to do is just maybe hit uh, census. And then from here, you can find the data set, for example, census, state, census, county, um, all kind of information. So let's try this one, census, states. And you see here, this is a physical collection. So essentially, it's a vector data set. And you have the uh, link in here and the thumbnail. So it, sim similarly, just hit import. Now we have this one in here. Hit run. And you add this one to the map. Okay, so you can easily access all the data set you just added. Very simple and straightforward. You don't need to memorize the um, the asset ID. Um, you only need to just do a search, and then you can add the data to the map. So now we have these three data layers. How about like, for example, if you're interested in a specific location, and then you want to use that location to do some analysis using some existing data set? How can we do that? So there are two and two another two types in here: name and address and that long. So for example, if I'm interested in my city, so you can just type, you can search any locations, any places, any name, you just, you just type and then hit enter. So now you see here, once I type uh, Knoxville, you will see here there are many cities named Knoxville here in the US. And the first one is actually the one I like, okay. But if you, if you, if you are interested in other, you can click this one the map will automatically center and uh, zoom to the specific location. So if you can try this one, you can try any other one you like. So I'm going to go back to the first one. So this is my city. And I want to, for example, analyze uh, the land cover for my state. 
I can get this point and then I can use this point to filter my state. So how can you get the point once you uh, have a marker here on the map? If you scroll down here, very simple. So once you do the search, all these locations can be accessed using this one called map.searchlocations. So if you hit enter, uh, shift enter, then you should be able to see, right? Um, by default, it only shows 10 locations. Okay, so in here, if you scroll up in here, okay. And the first one here um, is the location. So the one you click will be converted to geometry. Um, because right now, here, this is only a list. It's not Earth engine objects. We need to convert the location to Earth engine objects. So uh, you have, can access this uh, attribute, just uh, search location geometry. Maybe shift, shift enter. Now you will see this one here. Uh, it's an Earth, Earth engine object. All we need to do is to assign this one to a location, and then you can print out the X, Y, Z if you want. Okay. So in this case, I it's a point object, and the, this is the longitude. This is the latitude, right? So it's exactly this, this point location. You can certainly use this one, the point filter, the uh, the state boundary, for example. Okay. So this is the physical collection. So all we need to do, for example. If I'm to, I want to extract just Tennessee out of the in all the states, I can just grab this data set and then we can come back to here. So we can define a new variable called TN equals to, okay, this is the state boundary and then dot filter, uh, filter bounds, right? So we can filter by the point. So the point is this one, right? The one we search. And then you come back to here. Once you have this one, we can add this one to the map. So add layer and then TN. So we can say Tennessee. And let's take a look of filter bounds. Okay, we have another one here. Now let's come back to here. You will see this one right now, it's highlighted. So let me um, uncheck the other one. Okay, so now you have this, uh, the entire. The um, uh, state of Tennessee, the polygon, and then you can use the polygon to continue to do analysis. For example, you can just extract the land cover just for the state, or elevation, or any other raster data set you want. All we need to do is to find out which one. So this is the data set for the land cover. So we can come back to here, then land cover equal to this entire data set dot clip. Okay, there's a clip function that you can clip just to Tennessee. And then you can again add the map to the layer. Add the layer to the map, sorry. Uh, then cover. And then parentheses. And then, for example, TN then cover. And then, uh, sorry, the typo. <coughs> now let's come back to here. And we can, let me uncheck other layers. Okay, there you have it. Okay, so in here you can, um, quickly do analysis using any location you like. You can add the data set and then you can search by location or you can search location first and then get the data set. Besides searching by name and address, you can also by latitude and longitude. Okay, so you only need to just type, for example, 40, and then uh, this is the latitude, and separate by comma, and then, for example, longitude negative 100. Then just hit enter then you automatically find out the location. You also do the geocoding to find out which city and which state, okay? So you will see in here, the point move. You can change the um, to uh, longitude positive 400, and then you can just hit enter. Now you see here, this one is in um, um, Mongolia, okay? And simple and easy, uh, straightforward to use. You can also use the inspector. So if you zoom back to um, this here, all the data layers that we have, you can you can uh, use the inspector and then you can click here to get all the information if you need. Okay, so there are all kinds of tools you can uh, access all the data set. Okay, that's all for this uh, video. If you enjoy this uh, tutorial, please consider hitting the like button and subscribe to my channel. Hope to see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.